Hey guys, thanks for tuning into Alliance Tech. So today we are actually working in a freezer. Um, I'm out here on maintenance, but last maintenance I was out here on, I noticed a fan motor pad bearings in it. Kept tripping the, the VFD. So we're gonna go, I've already isolated the breaker and uh, isolated the power to the, to the coil. And uh, we're gonna get the scissor lift, get it all ready to go and get inside. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna prep the motor first, get the motor all prepped up, uh, get it in there. I also have a sub cooler controller at the replace as well. So um, stay tuned. All right, so let's prep the motor. So, this here is a, um, let's see here, let's do a, yeah, 40 RPM, uh, 2.25 horsepower. So, let's go in the freezer. Uh, one important one thing to remember on, on coils, like, on coils and on fan motors, is that they have VFD. So this is a VFD on it. So you want to make sure this is VFD rated. Now the one that we're pulling out, it's the same exact motor, but it wasn't uh, designed to be VFD rated. It's VFD capable. And uh, there's a um, uh, inverter duty. So uh, the other one's just a V. It's an inverter capable. This one's inverter duty. So this is actually suitable for VFD. And when doing this, you got to make sure you connect your grounds, connect everything correctly, and make sure your grounds are all landed back to your VFD because the VFDs are kind of far away from this coil here. So let's go ahead and open this thing up here, and uh, we will get it wired up for. For its voltage, this is a dual voltage here. plate there so um, cover plate so added slated it a little bit so you guys can see that but there's a one two three taps in there and we'll just verify if it's rated for oh this is super easy to wire so it's crazy so depending on your voltage you just move this thing over <laughs> I mean, it's super easy. So here, so if it's wired, if it, this jumper right here, Y1 jumper is completely over there for low voltage or high voltage, which is it's set up for 480. Um, it goes to it. It the pins are showing here, and it goes uh, one up. So low, high. So you see, it's selected for high, low. And right now, you can kind of. See that in here? That's really cool. And it's set up for um, 
I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see here. There's a little arrow, arrow right there. And high and low. So right now it's set up for high voltage. That was the easiest motor I've ever had to wire up. <laughs> they make it easier and easier these days. So um, well, let's go ahead and put the I get the things ready to go here. Get this plug out of it. Get the cover plate back on it. Some motors don't do not have that, so this is very. Uh, the last motors we put in were not like that. Um, on startup of this facility, uh, this is a brand new startup. All the motors were VFD capable. Uh, they weren't VFD uh, VFD rated, so they all failed. Um, and um, I believe this is the last VFD capable motor. Um, on there, but we'll find out. I thought we replaced them all, so it could just be a bad bearings in the, in the one that was in there. So, guys, so um, I'm all dressed up in my freezer suit, I got all my safety gear on. Uh, I'm gonna use my headlamp today because it got kind of dark in the freezer. So, uh, let's go ahead and get on the lift and get inside. All right, guys, I'm in the freezer, so uh, bear with me, it's gonna be kind of loud in here. Um, that's around minus six right now, minus seven. So uh, let me show you what's going on here. Here, so. Yeah, that's a bad, a bad motor there. So we're gonna go ahead and take it all apart and uh, get it, get it back. In operation here, we got the new motor in there. I, I gotta take this big old uh, uh, diffuser off, nozzle, and it throws the air out further into the freezer here. I can't just really go shoot down that way because I don't wanna shoot my customer's product, you know, he's, he's very you know, cautious of what he has in his facility here, so. But um, let me just, he, he's allowing me to, to take video of what I'm doing today, so. Here you guys go. I'm um, gonna go ahead and set this up here. Get this nozzle off so you guys can see it. I can't leave the GoPro out too long because it's in a freezer. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know if the GoPro can stand this kind of cold for very long. So I'm gonna shoot what I can and show you guys what I'm doing. All right guys, so I got the, the nozzle off. So there it is. Uh, I did, uh, so motor was vibrating so bad because the bad bearings Work you good, it's not as bright. It's crazy. So yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fan blade off and uh get the motor out of there. Alright, I got the fan blade off. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the wires and uh, pull the motor out. Okay. All right guys, so I got the motor unbolted and uh, I'm gonna pull it out right now.
go ahead and bolt it up and uh, I'll let you guys see when I wire it up what I'm doing. All right. Alright guys, so I got it wired up here. Check it out. So it lines uh, one, two, and three here. Kind of wired back up. And uh, got the voltage on high. So we're pretty good. I got to go ahead and um, put the fan blade back on, test it for rotation. Um, and uh, it should be good so uh, the grounding uh, on, on this one it's grounded this this rail right here through the feet so I went ahead and uh, I rubbed all the paint off with a uh, screwdriver uh, where all the feet go through it I I'm gonna check ground uh, just to verify that I'm grounded to the to the motor here and I'll show you that right now okay Alright guys, so earlier my uh, GoPro did get too cold, it caused the SD card to not record it. Just, I don't know if it's an issue with just the SD card itself, or if uh, if it's something else going on, I have, I have no idea. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I already tested the fan rotation, but I'm going to show you guys what I did to do that. But I go back in there, the SD card is probably going to fail again. So. Um, I got to keep you in my jacket and pop out when uh, just to show you what I've done because uh, uh, I guess the GoPro Hero 9 and 10 does, they don't work real well in freezers so I might have to get a hot box or something to put it in I'm not 100% I'm sure but you guys know of anything I could do to uh, have a camera work inside a freezer it's around minus uh, it's actually a lot colder than I thought it was it's uh it's uh, like minus 10 right now minus 9 minus 10 so Let's go inside. Hey guys uh, so I'm out of the freezer uh, and uh, there's one critical thing you guys should do when coming out of the freezer with tools and stuff is actually clean your tools off so if you notice all my tools are wet so all the tools they're all wet so I didn't you know necessarily need all the stuff in the freezer but you never know what you're gonna take I hate going back in back out of the freezer and these are gear, these are gears and stuff in them so you know, you got, you're going to have 
some uh, so, the, so, so I'll clean that up, clean this up, clean this up here, this up, this up, this up, and uh, got a lot of stuff here. I gotta, I gotta fix now, so so I don't, my tools don't rust. Um, you gotta make, you know, and, and really good uh, use for rust is WD-40. So um, we're gonna use WD-40 today. And you get a rag here. We're just gonna go ahead and kind of just wipe down the tools. And uh, I got a fan right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fan on. I get a little noisy in here, but. Start, start drying out my tools a little bit. So um, they're ready to use the next time I use them. So it's really, I mean, customer, he, he doesn't, you know, he, he wants to make sure you're fixing his equipment, but then again, you have to bring all your tools in there and, and, um, and bring them out, you're gonna ruin them all. So in order to go back in there again, you gotta have tools. So go ahead and clean up your tools everything all cleaned up here and uh, so all you got to do is just um, spray down a little bit so go ahead and push this out of the way here lay this down here like this put everything back on here all right so we'll go ahead and clean all this stuff up here let's get another rag So we're just going to go ahead and wipe this stuff off and uh, clean your tools up. You guys want to know what kind of tools I, I, I have? Be doing a video on that here soon. On this kind of what I have, and uh, if you if you just spray them down with WD-40, then you know it should prevent you know them from rusting. And uh, next time you use them, they'll be nice and lubed up. You know, so you don't have to worry about that. done here go ahead and put the tools back in in your uh, little holder here um, so they're out of the way so that's my crescent wrench that's also a pipe wrench it works really well here's here's a here's this is a uh, we call a Ford wrench here and uh, the reason why they call it a Ford wrench is you guys are gonna love this is that uh, it's based off of the Ford wrench that actually came out of the Model T Fords. So if you see that, this Ford, it, it seems they're almost identical. Uh, this is the Ford USA. And uh, this, the only difference is, is, is that this one here and this one here, um, we have a uh, square, uh, square uh, uh, end here and this one doesn't have that in here. So, this is to actually take the oil pan nut off of the Model T ports. And um, so you can do your oil change with this wrench. You do a lot of stuff. This actually came with the Model T ports. I actually found this at an antique shop. And I'm like, oh, no, no way. This is completely, you know, almost identical compared to what we have there. I mean, this is a little heavier. It's probably a little forged a little better, but this is where they came from. So in the future, Hey, you ask you anyone what's a Ford wrench? Well, this is a Ford wrench. People call them monkey wrenches. Uh, they sell them, make them crescent. I get, I am I from an aircraft company here in Corona, California, and uh, so it doesn't have crescent on. But all of my, the rest of my other ones, they just like most mostly use. I use it as a hammer. <laughs> I use it to break ice off. So 
Uh, but this uh, this is where it came from. So I have this here and uh, kind of neat, really neat here. So um, let's go ahead and finish up with uh, the cleanup here. So pretty much it there. Just kind of leave everything up and get it back together. You know, you don't, you're not, you don't want to spend a ton of time doing this just a little bit. These are real critical. You want to get things with little nooks and crannies in it, get the water out of there. So stand it up in front of the fan there. Yeah, have it blow any of water, evaporate the water immediately before it can start rusting the metal. You know, um, same thing here. So you got this here, you to pull all your parts and pieces out. Okay. You're not going to be able to get into here, but what you do here is just spray inside there. That's all looped up inside there, so shouldn't have any issues with rust later on with that guy there. So, um, same thing in here, just spray, spray in here a little bit. There you go. All right. Okay, so that goes in there. And this guy here, there's little channel locks here. Same exact thing. You know, keep your tools nice, because you gotta use them later. Have the tools that are rusted, that can barely move, you don't want that. You want to make sure that your tools are good to go. So, I have some more tools in here, but I opened this out. It should be pretty good. Uh, there's a little, 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 little uh, water in here. So, this is a 6 in 1 stubby here. So, make sure all the bits come out of this. It's back in. Alright. Back in there. This right here. Got a bunch of stuff in here, guys. So that's that. So I got this. Got some Allen wrenches. This thing's kind of cool here. This is from Matco here. It's a little stubby uh, wrench here. You can put you can put uh, uh, bits in here, and uh, and it's made by Matco. So Matco tools. Uh, sometimes it does pay. To spend the extra buck, guys. So buying cheap tools will uh, cause cheap results. Um, cause the more expensive uh, down times for your customers. Having the tool to do the job will always make the difference. Okay, so that goes back in there, it's nice and moved up. Um, this right here is called a TXV wrench, a squirreling wrench. Uh, don't mess with this wrench too much here, but I mostly do ammonia, but there are TXVs on ammonia. Um, Nice, and see this thing will say oil regularly right on it. I know WD-40 is not really an oil, but uh, hey, it works. It keeps things clean. It keeps uh, rust from getting in there. It keeps things nice and, and you know, moved up for the years. Years and years and years and years to come. I haven't bought a service wrench in probably, I'm gonna say, five years the last service wrench I bought was this gear wrench which they don't make anymore um, it's not on their website anymore and kind of hard to come by this gear wrench right here and the part number on this thing if you guys want to try to look it up is is a uh, 85220 D as Delta 85220 D as in Delta it's made by gear wrench it's uh, quarter inch 3 8 5 16 and 3 16 here it's, it's really cool. Um, you know, I, I, I've used it for years and years and years, and I just treat my tools like I'm going to use them again. You know, you have to, you have to do this. 
you know, or you're just gonna have you constantly buying tools over and over and over again. Always count your tools when you're taking in, in, in and out of uh, the freezer or in and out where you're working at. You wanna make sure that you have all your tools. I don't know how many times we go on a job site and I see our guys leaving tools on the job sites because they're in a hurry. You know, slow and steady wins the race, guys. In this industry, that's it, man. You get done much faster if you just take your time. So, yeah, customer doesn't want to see you cleaning your tools, you know, the, you know, and on, on his time. But then again, you know, did all my tools work today? Yeah, they did. I wasn't fighting them. I wasn't doing any of that. He doesn't have to pay for that kind of downtime. I mean, he shouldn't have to. But you know, if the customer expects you to have the tools to do the job, which I would say 100% of them do. Uh, they're going to, you know, this is also expected to make sure the tools return back to their operating state, you know, so. Alright guys, so, right here there's the subcooler control we're going to replace. Uh, one thing about this, I'm going to shut off the power to it. The subcooler is not going to work.
for quite a year. So hearing is everything these days, so protect your ears, wear earbuds, earplugs, make sure you do it. Alright guys, I'll see you in the van. Alright guys, we got the motor in, we got the subcooler controller in, everything's working exactly way it's supposed to. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.